We're here with Dr. Robert Jensen, professor of journalism at UT Austin. What are the dangers of the modern world that you speak about in your talk, and how can ordinary people avoid those perils? Well, certainly the, the two questions of the era are the profound injustice within the human family, the concentration of wealth, the way in which significant components of the human population don't have access to the minimal resources necessary for a decent life. The questions that we typically label questions of social justice. Equally important are questions of ecological sustainability, the fact that the whole world is out of balance with the larger living world, that we can no longer imagine sustaining this level of consumption, for instance, worldwide. Those are profound questions that require people to step back and both think about the way systems operate the way nation states operate, the way capitalism operates, the way that white supremacy and patriarchy affect our understanding of who does and doesn't deserve that minimally decent life. All of those are questions, but they're also questions about the way we live our daily lives and the way we're all implicated in this high energy, high technology world and the way that some of our daily decisions can distract and deflect us from focusing on the political and social movements that are needed to challenge those systems of power. So the question of whether we should pay attention to the big systems or the little questions of our daily life, I think misses the point that they're both important and an awareness of the need to change the way we live on a daily basis can help us understand better the systems and strengthen our resolve to challenge those systems. Does the media become important in manufacturing consent for the American imperial project? There's an assumption, often this is described as American exceptionalism, the idea that by definition the United States goes forward in the world to expand the scope of freedom and justice. And if the United States has to use military force, it's toward that goal of expanded justice and freedom. The evidence is quite to the contrary, that in fact the United States tends to use military force not to aid others and expand the scope of freedom, but to dominate and produce the economic domination that is at the heart of all of this. So American wars are very much imperial wars in the sense that they are to deepen and extend the scope of American economic control over other parts of the world. The news, unfortunately, too rarely even considers that and too often simply circulates the, the story that people in power tell. And that story that people in power tell is about the nobility of the American military enterprise around the world, rather than a critical examination of what's really happening. One place we really see the effect of how news media frame these questions is when we talk about terrorism, war crimes, the general concern about the inappropriate use of violence. Well, I believe that terrorism, defined as the use of force or the threat of force against civilians, is in fact illegitimate. Uh, when that terrorism takes the form of killing civilians one by one, violent beheadings, those are crimes that should be decried. But equally abhorrent are the crimes that states commit, which often meet that definition of terrorism. When the United States military bombs civilian areas, which it's done routinely in a variety of different conflicts. When it targets combatants without concern for civilians, right? all of these are forms of criminal behavior. They're often forms of terrorism. But because they're committed by states, especially powerful states, we tend to think of them as simply the messiness of war as opposed to intentional criminal acts. Do you feel technology or the growth of technology in the future can help solve our current climate change issue or any of the other issues that we have? Well, certainly with seven billion plus people on the planet, the advances in technology, especially sustainable energy technologies, are crucial. It's hard to imagine uh, a decent human future without developing those technologies. I think the question is, do we believe that those technologies alone will solve the problem? And that's where I would say no. I would say that the belief that, you know, ever more complex high technology will solve our problems is a kind of what some people call technological fundamentalism, a belief that we can constantly deal with these problems through more technology, even though it was the technology often in the first place that causes the problem. 
Uh, rather than thinking exclusively of technological solutions, I think we also have to think about how to scale back the cost of that human presence. Now that's a tricky question because of course around the world there are lots of people who don't have enough energy, for instance, to live a minimally decent life. So we have to both think about how to reduce the consumption, especially energy consumption, of certain segments of the world, but also apportion some of that energy to people who are more vulnerable, at the same time trying to reduce the overall footprint of humans on the planet. Because the one thing we can, I think, be fairly sure of is continued economic growth based on continued exploitation of energy, especially fossil energy, ends in only one way. And it ends in a pretty grim reality for those seven billion people, or at least a good chunk of them. Economic fundamentalism, this belief that capitalism will solve all our problems through markets, and technological fundamentalism, the belief that high technology will solve all our problems, I think are two of the most dangerous ideas currently circulating in the world. Far, in some ways far more dangerous than religious fundamentalism. As you can see, Dr. Robert Jensen has a lot to say about the media consumption crisis. One of my takeaways was that it's important to learn when to put the screens down and be more present. Reporting for Austin Indie Media, I'm Grace Alfar. Thanks for watching.